In the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 1, Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And it says, And David fled from Naoth in Ramah, and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity, and what is my sin before your father, that he seeks my life? David was on the run, and he didn't understand why it had to be that way. It shouldn't have been that way. He loved God. He minded his own business. He did what he was told to do. He was loyal, and yet he had all this trouble. And none of it made sense to him, and that's because none of it does make sense. Unless you inject sin. Sin destroys logic. And he, that is Jonathan, said unto him, David, God forbid you shall not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. Jonathan can't believe that his father would do something like that to David. And he also can't believe that his father wouldn't tell him if he was planning on doing something like that. Jonathan had an idealistic view of his father. He saw things the way they should be, not the way they really were. Three. And David swore, moreover, and said, Your father certainly knows that I have found grace in your sight. And he says, let, none, let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, there is a step between me and death. No well-meaning son of a backslidden king is going to convince David that he's not in trouble. Jonathan better step back and fall back into reality, or he's not going to be able to help David. He'll actually be a problem for David if he continues to live in denial. He keeps telling David, oh, it's okay, when it's not okay. We're not good for anyone if we live in non-reality. Four. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever your soul desires, I will even do it for you. Jonathan didn't believe that there was any danger, but David did. And consequently, even though he thought it was a waste of time, he would do whatever would make David feel better. I suppose he could have argued with David, but instead he understood David's concerns and acted in an understanding way. And, and that's, that's a true friend right there. Verse 5. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat, but let me go, that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at evening. If your father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it is well, your servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. If Saul isn't after David, then he's not going to care if David is missing from the dinner table. But if, Saul, if Saul's desire is to trap and kill David, he's going to be angry because the opportunity to do that will not be there. Hey, therefore you shall deal kindly with your servant, for you have brought your servant into a covenant of the Lord with you. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, kill me yourself, for why should you bring me to your father? David is fed up with the way things are. 
If he's innocent, like he believes, then Jonathan needs to support him all the way because they have a covenant. On the other hand, if Jonathan thinks that his father's hatred toward David is justified, then Jonathan should kill David himself right now. You know, there does come a time when you have to choose sides and go all out for the side that you choose. And hopefully that side will be Jesus. Nine. And Jonathan said, Far be it from you, for, it, for if I knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon you, then would, I, would not I tell it to you? Then, Dave, then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if your father answer you roughly? David wants to know how in the world he's going to know if he was right about Saul wanting to kill him. Who's going to have the guts needed to go out and tell David that the king is out to kill him? In other words, who's going to go against the king? Well, Jonathan has a plan. Verse 11, Jonathan said unto David, Come and let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. Jonathan has a plan, and so he takes David out into the country to show him how it's going to work. Verse 12. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord, I should say, yes, Jonathan said unto David, O Lord, God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time or the third day, and behold, if there be good toward David, and then and I send, and I then send not unto you and show it to you, the Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do you evil, then I will show it to you and send you away that you may go in peace and the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. Jonathan promises that he's going to talk to his father and let, and let David know how his father feels about him. Now, if I was David, I would say, Jonathan, your father tried to pin me to the wall with a javelin, okay? I don't think we need to go through this process. But Jonathan did have to go through this process because he was the type of person that would believe the best about someone until it was impossible to believe it anymore. That's just the kind of guy he was. He had to go through this process. Again, verse 13, the Lord do so and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do you evil, then I will show it to you and send you away that you may go in peace and the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. If I find out that my dad wants to kill you, David, may the Lord kill me if I don't tell you lesson if we have if we have something maybe information maybe something else that can help others then god expects us to share it with them if we do not we will answer to god for being uncaring 14 and you shall not only while yet i live show me the kindness of the lord that i die not but also you shall not cut off your kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord has cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. You know, in those days, this is what Jonathan is getting at. In those days, when a man became king, they would often immediately kill all their potential rivals. Now, that was pretty much standard practice. And Jonathan will help David and go against his father if need be. But Jonathan wants assurance that after David is on the throne, that he's not going to kill all of Saul's relatives, including Jonathan himself. 16. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. David swears to Jonathan that if he ever breaks his promise... He wants a curse to fall on himself and his family. And you know, in those days, it would happen. 
David would never hurt anyone from Jonathan's family um, be because he cared about them. You know, if people care about someone, they'll also care about those whom they care about, which in this case would not only be Jonathan, but his family. David, David wouldn't do anything to hurt him. 17, and Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him. For he loved him as he loved his own soul. David swore again. Not because he had to, but because he cared about Jonathan. You don't need a law that says thou shalt not if you care about people. Love is a guarantee that you won't hurt the other person. David did it to make his friend feel better. 18. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and you shall be missed because your seat will be empty. We'll see about that, won't we? But Jonathan's saying, David, you're not going to be at that dinner. The king's going to know it, and he's going to wonder why. 19. And when you have stayed three days, then you shall go down quickly and come to the place where you did hide yourself when the business was in hand and shall remain by the stone easel and i will shoot the i will shoot three arrows on the side thereof as though i shot at a mark and behold i will send a lad saying go find out the arrows if i expressly say unto the lad behold the arrows are on this side of you take them then you can come for there is peace to you and no hurt as the Lord lives. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond you. Go your way, for the Lord has sent you away. And as touching the matter which you and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be between me, or you and me, forever. David did not say, Forget it. God is on my side. I don't need this. Saul is the bad guy. I'm not hiding in some dirty old cave. I know my rights, and I know I am right, and I know that God is in my side. I'm going to go stand out in the public square right in front of the palace. What do you think of that? Because I'm going to trust God. No, he did not say that. Maybe that's the way it ought to be, you know. But that's not the way it is. Not in this sinful world it isn't. The Bible says we are to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. In other words, God's saying, be street smart. Because having right on your side doesn't mean you don't have to be cautious. God tells us, as I said, to be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. 24. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spoke not anything that day, for he thought something has befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean talking about being ceremonially defiled. No one said anything when David didn't show up for dinner that first time, but I bet you the tension was so thick that you could cut it with a knife, and that's because everyone there except Jonathan knew that there was a price on David's head. Saul was uneasy because David was missing, but he didn't say anything. Not yet. This is a good place to stop. We'll pick it up again next time right here.